Hello, it's Matt McDonald again and um, yesterday we made a video showing you the, the new menu system, how it works and how you can drag and reorganize the windows on uh, what we're calling the dock on the left hand side. Something I need to point out when you right click and you bring up the warehouse, the warehouse currently is not a window that you can dock. Um, we'll eventually get that available so that you can dock it and that the preview window is also something that's currently not a dockable item but eventually we'll get that handled as well. I made a couple extra houses after I completed the video so by loading that file it will not only load your scene that you have in design but it will also load all the assets that you made for that particular scene in your custom directory. Here are just a few of the other houses that I've made. I'm tapping the R button, you can see how they're rotating. And they're rotating based on the center, the location of the environment when they were modeled. If you don't like that rotation, you simply bring it back into build and then relocate it at the origin that you would like it to rotate. And then you can resave that particular file and now when we go back to design you can see now that that file its rotation has changed in that respect anything that you add to these buildings after you've saved them will also be replicated in every instance of that building and I'll show you why that's important later so we're gonna make a village with our terrain and it's going to be somewhat of an island village with water around it so currently when you load the software it comes with the terrain already loaded and the water already loaded for you you can pick different terrain palettes by clicking on these arrows here and you can see that the terrain changes as you click them we're going to use terrain number eight for this project and this is what it currently looks like. If you want to work in a mode that actually shows you the the lighting for the environment you just hit the end button and it'll turn on an environment for you and currently if you look at the atmosphere options it's using as a go-to skybox number 24. Now if you don't want to use that skybox you simply just drag the slider and you can see it, it goes through many different skyboxes that are built in the tool as well as many different light kits and those are all set up for you actually I'm kinda liking zero so we're gonna stay with that one I'm gonna redock my atmosphere sometimes it's a good thing to work in the, the actual lighting that you're gonna have in the environment and other times you'll find that as you move out that the fog will get too dense and that you won't be able to see too well. That can be adjusted by the actual atmosphere options as well and by sliding the density you can see how that changes and you can add more or less density to the volumetric fog. Now if you'd like to use a different type of fog called linear fog you check that box and then you can actually scale the start and end points of the fog. So the start point being the camera is set at zero or you can have the start point be whatever you like. And you see as I slide these you're I'm adjusting the fog start and end and the ramp between the start and end. So we're going to stick with the volumetric fog and adjust it to a setting that that'll work for our modeling of our environment. Um, it's important to note that if you want to change the color of the fog, you simply click on the color box and it brings up a color picker and you can actually change the color of the fog to whatever you like and you can see how that works. Now if you get to a situation where you've gotten your colors far off from the original sky that was loaded, it's not a problem you can hit the default button and it will reset the original color that was designed for that skybox. Okay, I'm going to put this back on the dock. For now, I'm going to turn off the skybox. I'm going to tap the end key and that turns off the skybox. Or you can see as well, I can turn off the toggle for the skybox 
on the atmosphere options, I can uncheck it here and uncheck the fog. So I can keep the skybox on and have the fog off, or I can have the fog on and turn the skybox off. So there's some variations to the atmospheres that you may not be aware of. Uh, first off, I want to make a island, and I want to have the island large enough so that the landmass extends into the water. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to terrain, I'm going to select new, and I'm going to scale the size of my terrain to be 500. Currently that's the largest size you can make. Eventually we're going to increase that. And that's 500 meters by 500 meters. And the resolution of the terrain dictates the smoothness or the tessellation of the terrain mesh itself. So you want to have that as high as possible if you want to have a very detailed clean terrain. I'm going to set my water height at 4 because all the characters are actually 2 meters tall and I want the character to be able to go under the water. I'm going to set my terrain height to 0 so that the terrain is already underneath the water 4 meters. I'm going to create that. Now you can see there's my water and as I scroll around and go under you can see there's my terrain underneath the water and there's my grid. I'm going to adjust my grid size, bring up the grid editor, I'm going to adjust my snap values, I'm going to adjust my cells, and I like to be able to see the grid without being, it being too much in the way. So I've uh, designed it so that you can turn off different parts of the grid at any time using these eyeballs. And I'm going to turn off the cells, but keep the snap and the center. The overall grid itself and turn off the cells. Place that back over there. So I'm going to end the video here. Thanks for watching.